Vicente, welcome back and congratulations on receiving your 50 Perfect Test jacket. What does that mean to you? Thank you. And man, this is really special, you know, because like they said, uh, I'm the third guy that came into the UFC already under the, the USADA program uh, to get the 50 clean tests. And for me, it has always been an honor, you know, to, to be able to fight in such a, 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 an event like the UFC and know that all, all the guys here are clean. Everybody's complete, competing, you know, under the same circumstances. And that just gives me, you know, that that extra confidence that, yeah, I'm here to be the best in the world and, and nobody's going to be, you know, kind of cheating or anything like that. So it's, it's definitely really good. Awesome. And you're back in the main event spotlight. I wanted to ask, how was the process like getting back here to fight week? Obviously, you unfortunately went through the brain bleed. How was that process like? So, yeah, that, that was definitely unfortunate, but I was 100% blessed, you know, for being able to recover very well since the first day right after the fight you know when i got the news uh they did all the testing all the exams and everything went well my body was recovering and then the ufc my manager ali abdelaziz you know they were always uh, with me in this process trying to get the best you know uh information for me for to make sure that i was going to get fully recovered and be able to compete and and that's you know what's going to happen now i'm, I'm back i'm a hundred percent i would even say i'm better than a hundred percent you know i i feel a much better fighter than i was before so yeah i'm, I'm definitely blessed Glad to hear that, man. And obviously, you got the call to fight RDA. What was your initial reaction when you found out he was going to be your next opponent? Yeah, that, that fight is, man, is, is amazing for me. And it's funny because when I got the call from Ali, I, did, we, I had no idea who I was going to fight. I was looking at the top 10, and I wanted to get a fight, you know, that is going to put me back up there, you know, going to move me up. But I never thought about RDA because I wasn't sure if he was ever going to fight a welterweight again or if he's going to stay at lightweight. So when I got that call, I said, man, this is the perfect fight. A former champion, a guy, you know, that I looked up to uh, during my career, you know, definitely is a guy that, that I want to fight. And main event couldn't be better, you know, five rounds for us to go in there and, and put on a great show. And obviously the last two didn't go your way. But when you look back at those fights, is there any takeaways or anything you learned that will help you develop, continue to develop as a mixed martial artist and ultimately get your hand raised on Saturday? Yeah, for sure. I think that, you know, uh, this is the first time in the UFC I'm coming off two losses. And that definitely kind of uh, made me look back and try to change a few things, uh, develop some new things that, that I needed to develop. And just look back at, you know, everything that, that I can improve. And I took time as well. And that time was, was really good for me to work on all of this. So I definitely think like, I, I don't like, I hate losing, you know, I hate losing. But sometimes they definitely come for, for good and, and it has made me a better fighter. And your opponent RDA was in here not too long ago. He said that he believes exp his experience will ultimately help him get his hand raised. How do you think you're gonna get your hand raised? So I definitely uh, agree with him in the sense that he's more experienced guy, but at the same time, I think that I've been in 31, 32 MMA fights, if I count the ones in, in the Ultimate Fighter. So I got also experience on my side, and my plan is to go in there and, and, and try to beat him with all the tools I have. You know, we're fighting MMA, he's an MMA fighter, I'm an MMA fighter, we both submit, finish, and if we need to, you know, uh, take it, to the long run and, and, and use our hearts, we have that. So that's the fight I see, a fight that, you know, two of us are really well-rounded and it's gonna be about who wants it more and I believe I'm gonna want it more that night. And uh, last one for me, what would be a message you have for other fighters or athletes that are going through setbacks kind of like you did with the brain bleed? I think that the biggest thing is, you know, I, I would put two things. One is just trying to you know, everyone around you, that's really important. So my family was a big, big thing for me during this process. You know, everybody had my back, you know, uh, a lot of my coaches as well. And, and my manager, as I said, you know, the people around you, that's super important. You know, the more you can surround yourself with people that really care about you, that's that's a big thing and second thing is God you know that's something that I've always had you know God has always been in my corner always helping me and blessing me and and that faith kept me kind of like confident that I was going to recover that I was going to get back here and that I was going to do what I love once again so those those would be the two things thank hey, you Vicente.
Hey, so how, how's dad life? Dad life is great. It, it's the greatest thing, man. You know, always having fun, seeing my little one get it, getting bigger and bigger, and more energy. You know, he's he's jumping around, running everywhere. Now he he stayed in Florida, back with his mom. But uh, it's fun. I miss them, and yeah, after the fight, I, I get to enjoy that again. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit more about the the uh, brain bleed. Like, how scary was that? I mean, especially like you're in, you're in combat sports, right? So your brain's gonna get hit again. So like, was there ever a thought like maybe I'm not gonna fight any again, like fight again? So uh, the first reaction, like I wasn't really like I don't know why. In a way, I felt like it could happen just because I've I never been knocked out and I was hit a lot and and Jeff hits hard. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm here in the hospital. They are taking long to, to like, release me. I think something went on. So they told me, and I was like, okay, uh, what do we have to do? For now, we're going to just wait, see how it, how it, you know, develops. And at that point, I was kind of, like, relaxed, and, and, and I was confident that I was going to get, you know, better, and, and that was it. The days after that, so when I started, you know, I already was getting, I was recovering and doing more exams and going to neurologists. That's when they told me, hey, so now we're going to do all these testings to see if you can fight again. That that got me worried because I'm, I think never in my life I thought that something could just take this away suddenly, you know. Suddenly I'm, I'm not going to do what I love anymore. So, yeah, at that point I was, I was kind of worried, but... You know, thank God, everything, every single exam they made just came back like, okay, you're getting better. Then, okay, everything is healed. The la like all last three exams I made, there is not even like, like a, there isn't even scars or anything that show that I had the injury I had. So that's 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 amazing. And yeah, I think that it, it got me worried, but I but you know having faith in God and knowing that things were gonna be okay kind of got me through the whole process. Awesome, thanks for sharing that. Um, you moved to the United States. Um, yes. What was the decision behind that? So uh, you know I had a lot of time after this fight because I was suspended. Uh, I took the suspension very like seriously and positively for me to grow. So. First of all, I didn't spar for six months, and that gave me extra time to work and develop on techniques, and also to look back at my career and, and see like certain things that I needed to do more. And one thing was to train more. I needed to be more at Kill Cliff with all those guys, with all the beasts, you know, only in the UFC, in the top 15 welterweight. Me, Kamar Usman, Gilbert Burns, uh, Ian Gary, Shavkat, so only beasts over there, plus a whole bunch of other great guys at welterweight. And, you know, having that every single day, not only when I have a fight, but every single day, I felt like that was the next step. Plus the coaches, you know, all the coaches there are, are, are so experienced. So it just, it just made sense in my mind. Also now with my kid, I think Florida and, and the United States is a great country to grow up in. You know, I, I see a lot of my friends. Gilbert Burns has his kids here and they go to school. They, they do all the sports. I think that's great. So that's also me and my wife considered, you know, it's, it's going to be a good life for us. And, and we decided and then we moved. Yeah, it was, it was good. Who are some of your main training partners for this camp? So for this specific camp, uh, I worked a lot with Angel, is, uh, Angel Alvarez. He fought LFA recently. He's a beast. And soon, soon he'll be in the UFC, I'm telling you. This guy is, is a beast. He helped me a lot. You know, he's a nat natural southpaw, judo Olympic uh, team in, in, in Cuba, so really good grappling, but also great striking, so really helped me out. And then also another guy, two other guys. Yusako, Yusako helped me a lot. He's in the UFC. He's going to be fighting in Singapore. He's a beast. Uh, Yusako Kinoshita and Kamar Usman. He went in for some, for many of my trainings, uh, many of my sparrings as well. And he's a guy that fought Rafael before. So he was, you know, kind of giving me the pointers, you know, and he knows me for a long time. So he knows kind of my game. So seeing, you know, maybe this can work and this can work and also giving me that, that physical work, you know, trying to bring that, that intensity that uh, Rafael will have, you know, so, so that was really good. And finally, we know that you love cars, you love racing in the UFC, come to like the, to do the UFC Connected, and then they kind of, owning a car, owning a race car, like how was that? Yeah. 
Man, I, I love cars. That has always been a big passion of mine. And I would say, like, car racing is a really expensive hobby. That's why I and, and sport. That's why I don't think I ever, you know, would become a race car when I was a kid. But I would have loved to, you know, if, if it wasn't weren't MMA, it would be racing. But yeah, now I, I get to fulfill these dreams, and and it's crazy because, like, through doing what I love through fighting in the UFC, you know, through building this, build, being able to provide to my family, being able, you know, to to just uh, bring honor to my parents, you know, f to show them that, hey, I'm, I'm doing good things. I also get to, you know, uh, realize so many dreams of that child, you know, that, that little kid. When I was a kid and I dream, oh, one day I'm going to have a race car, one day I'm going to have this. And now I get to do that. It's it's really amazing, you know. It's it's really, I don't know, it's it's, it's great and it's, it's a great thing. I have a race car in Brazil. That's the only car I have left in Brazil. I sold everything else to move over here. And I got myself a Mustang GT over here, manual manual gearbox, because I love that. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely take it to the track in Homestead, Miami soon. What's the next car you want to get? Man, I don't know. I'm I, not for now. Let me let me just chill with this one. Uh, I plan now. I have a YouTube channel as well, so my plan is kind of like show guys what I do with the car, go racing and stuff, and maybe modify modifying it little by little. So for now, let me chill with the Mustang GT and and get more bonuses. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you. Sente, I noticed you mentioned that, uh, I'm right here. Oh, hey, it's you, okay. <laughs> I saw that you just mentioned that you would have been interested in a race car career, race car driving career. Would that have been like open wheel, like Formula One IndyCar, or would it have been like sports cars and stuff like that? Man, I, I love all of them. So Formula One is, is the highest level, I think the most technical. I, I love stock car racing. So NASCAR in Brazil, we have stock car with V8 engines as well. That's pretty fun. But I think that me, you know, analyzing my fighting style, I think I would be a rally driver because it's all about like improvisation and, and being, you know, wild, not, not, not having fear. So I think I would be a rally driver. I'll be honest, I didn't think you were going to say NASCAR. I mean, have you been able to check out NASCAR here in the States? I haven't yet, but I do plan on doing that, you know, uh, especially like in Florida. We have Homestead Miami, there is Daytona, there's so many tracks. So I do want to I do want to go. I've been to one race in Florida. That was in Sebring, and it was the Ferrari Challenge, and it was amazing, you know, to go there and, and see that. Yeah. And the last one, as someone from Brazil, did you look up to Ayrton Senna? Yes, definitely. That's that's my biggest idol, you know, in sports, and I think especially because he brings much more than just a great athlete. You know, he gave it all to the sport, including his life, unfortunately, at the end, but. You know, he gave it all, and he always went in there really to to just show the whole Brazilians that we could do more, that we could, you know, if we believed in our in our dreams, if we had faith and we worked hard, we could do more and accomplish things that people could never believe that we could. So that's why, you know, he's definitely my idol, you know, and the guy that I look up to the most as an athlete ever. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Vicente, going back on the, the injury that you recovered from, not to rub it into the ground, but it's just such an interesting, you know, injury. Did it feel any different, you know, uh, on injuries like that where you can't actually see, sometimes, you know, you don't really understand or, or you can't tell the severity. Did it feel anything different? Could you feel that something was going on or did it just feel like, hey, I just took a beating in a fight? Could you tell that anything was going on? So it did feel different and it's hard for me to say and, and have a difference between like I just took a hard beating or I have something serious because I've never been knocked out. That was the first time. And before that, I had only been knocked down by Wonder Boy and by Barbarina, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was it. And in training, I've never been knocked down. So for me, it's not something common. It's not a normal feeling. So definitely it did feel different. I cannot say it's because of the injury or it's because it was the first time I was knocked out, but, but it felt different. Like I was right as soon as I got out of there, I felt like kind of like, I don't know, don't feel like overall, I don't feel so good. And then later I kind of had a headache, a little bit of headache and that, and like just, just feeling, you know, like you, I got hit in the head a lot. So it, you feel that for sure. And then finally, just when, when you were finally able to go back to, to training, what was the sort of, I guess, the, 
doctor's orders going back into. How long before you were able to start sparring again and how, how much sparring were you able to get into this camp before coming back into this? So uh, the sparring, like there isn't a specific timing. So right at the start, like one, one month after the injury, I started doing like walking, running a little bit, more physical stuff. And that was the first kind of, you know, month physical. So lifting weights, running and all that. Then I started getting into pad work, you know, mitts and a little bit of grappling. And, and then I really got into like in the third to fourth month, I got back to all the training but sparring and not all, obviously not at a super high intensity. But the sparring part, what they said is like, I was suspended for six months and by the doctor's orders from fighting. So I could not fight. Sparring, they said like, this is gonna be more of feeling and how you feel. Like what they said is like, every time you train, you have to observe if you get headaches or, or things like that after. I didn't get any of that. So I could have sparred maybe before the six months, but what I chose is not to spar for six months just so I really took that time. And then after the six months were done, I came back slowly by sparring. So I would spar one week and then be two weeks off, then spar again and take it really technical. And at like when training camp came up, like I already, like now I already spar regular, but even the way I spar has changed. So it's much more technical. I know how to like, you know, how to work in a way where I'm not getting into brawls and sparring anymore. And also like being at, at, at a team like Kilcliffe and there are so many high level guys, they also know how to respect that. Where we go, we really push hard physically, like in our cardio, but we don't need to be hitting each other and, and, and hurting each other. And I know to go in there, you, ha you have to go in there with 100% confidence and, and your preparation going in there. But is there any point where something in the back of your head until you take those first couple strikes, is that previous injury going to be on your mind at any point, uh, you know, until you, the fight gets going? You know, I think that uh, I cannot say yes or no for that. I think it's going to be most like definitely I haven't fought since my last fight. This is going to be my first fight after what I went through. So there is a part that I'm only going to find out during the fight. That's for sure. But at the same time, like I've always uh, kind of worked a lot on my mental aspect, you know, with my so I have a psychologist, Luciana Castelo Branco, and she always, you know, has has helped me a lot with with just knowing myself and, and knowing kind of my fears and facing them, you know, instead of facing them but in a way that I embrace it you know so what I do understand now is like yeah this is the first time I'm coming back but hey I did everything I needed to do before so I am in the best shape I could be you know so considering that I'm very confident that I can go in there and perform really well and when I get hit if I get hit we'll see what happens <laughs> that's great to hear best of luck on Saturday thank you hold well on hey thank you guys